Hi, this is Yogeshwar 7000 again and I'm back with another very interesting topic and this topic is on the planet Mercury and the birth of planet Mercury as such. In our other videos, we have been discussing about various astrological, Vedic astrological scriptures which are coming from Sage Parashara or Sage Gemini or other sages per se. But sometimes I go into the Puranas as well to see what, whether there is a connection of Vedic astrology with the Puranas what kind of connection you can find out from the Puranas as far as planets are concerned and very surprisingly I found a great deal of information and a great deal of connection which can make our astrological readings a little more accurate because unless we understand the planets completely and where the planets are coming from it is very very difficult for us to make a correct pr prediction so just do not limit your research to the Vedic astrological text just uh, also go into the other scriptures like in this case I have gone into the Devi Bhagavata Purana there are 18 Mahapuranas and Devi Bhagavata Purana Devi means the goddess is one of a very important Purana and uh, from that Purana you, we will get the story of the birth of the planet Mercury which again I, like I said will help us in our Vedic astrological re readings because we will see the connection of those planets and their relationship with other planets per se so this is what the Devi Bhagavad Purana talks about as far as the planet Mercury's birth is concerned Brahaspati or Guru or the planet Jupiter is considered to be the Guru of the Devas or the gods because there are two entities devas and dhanavas the gods and the demons <clears throat> and brahaspati or guru or the planet jupiter is considered to be the guru of all the devas and once the planet moon or moon had invited guru or jupiter to perform some some kind of a ritual in his house and also Tara, the wife of the beautiful wife of Guru or Jupiter, had come in also to visit Moon or Chandra and visited actually his house. And when Tara visited Moon's house, at that point Jupiter was not present there. And as soon as Moon saw Tara, Moon extremely fell in, immediately fell in love with her and it was kind of from both sides because Tara also felt very very attracted to planet and the characteristics of moon are that he can attract any female person so one of the things which I'll bring to your attention here as far as your astrological Vedic astrological reading the concern is that the characteristics of moon are that he has the power to attract women as is we know that moon has 27 wives and those wives are the 27 daughters of Daksha and that is also coming from the Puranas <clears throat> and as soon as moon saw Tara he got attracted to her and Tara of course because he was the great moon got attracted to moon as well and the passions became so high between them that the wife of guru or jupiter who's actually the guru of the gods and actually the guru of the planet moon as well decided to stay with moon and not go back to her husband's house her husband jupiter's house and seeing the separation from his wife Brahaspati or Jupiter or Guru send his pupils to the planet moon and asked him to send his wife Tara back but Tara was at that time so smitten with Chandra or moon that she refused to come and Brahaspati or Guru or Jupiter kept sending over his pupil again and again asking Tara to come back but she would not and then one day Jupiter personally went to Chandra's house Moon's house 
and he was a little angry with Moon and said, well, Moon, you know, why are you doing this? You are keeping my beautiful wife in your house and I'm your guru. I mean, you cannot do that. This is against dharma or religion or what it should be. But Chandra would not give up. Now, Jupiter told, well, you have 27 wives. Why do you want my wife? But no kind of a reasoning would convinced Chandra and he said that well Tara wants to stay with me so I do not see any reason why she should go back and uh, Guru or Jupiter became very very anxious and went back and he was very he was filled with grief and uh, he was he didn't know what to do and then one day he decided to get the help of Indra and Indra as we know is the chief of the gods and uh, Indra Deva understood his situation and Indra said that I see that you're very very sad and you are my guru and you have been insulted in my own kingdom of gods so I'm going to I'm going to try and help you and Indra said that okay I am if Chandra does not return your wife Tara then I'm going to have to wage war against Chandra or Mu and he decides that and then the story says that there is a war which does not happen actually but there is a preparation of war and during this process Brahma comes in and he he was very very upset himself and he tells Chandra to return Guru's wife the beautiful Tara back to Guru otherwise he will ask Vishnu and once Vishnu comes they know that he will destroy the person who is doing adharma or evil so this way Chandra finally finally returns Guru's wife Tara back to Guru so this is the story how it happens and but in the meanwhile the most interesting thing that happened was that Tara became pregnant and again there was a confusion as to whose child and the, she, she actually gave birth to an, a son and then there was a confusion as to whose son it was was it the planet moon's son or was it the planet Guru's son. Guru thought it was his son because Tara was his wife but Moon said no since Tara the wife of Jupiter stayed with him it is actually actually his son. So what happens is that again the war between the Devas and Danavas was started to decide as to whose whose son is, is is the new child born and then Brahma the great God asks Tara that who actually is the father of the child and Tara spoke to Brahma and said this is Chandra's child so the decision was made so this is how we know that the planet Mercury is actually Chandra's or moon's son it is not Jupiter or Brahaspati or Guru's son once this was decided because Tara herself mentioned that to the great god Brahma and then this confusion was finished so once we do Vedic astrological readings we know that Chandra and Mercury they are not friends to each other and why because Mercury who was actually Tara's son 
was kind of an illegitimate child so he has some kind of <clears throat> an enmity towards Chandra so in Vedic astrological charts you will see that Chandra moon and Mercury or Buddha are not friends to each other and this is coming directly from the Puranas and you can see the reason why so that's one reason the second thing is when Jupiter or Guru was sending messengers to Jupiter no messengers to moon to return his wife so when Jupiter or Guru was sending messengers to moon to return his wife Tara Shukracharya which is the planet Venus or Shukra and it's mentioned right there in the Puranas that because of the enmity of Shukracharya with Brahaspati Shukracharya recommended Chandra do not return Tara do not return Tara to Brahaspati or Guru or Jupiter and in case there is a war and in case Indra wages a war against you I will help you with my mantra Shakti or the power of the mantras so this is another another insight we get through the Puranas that one that Shukracharya or the planet Venus is extremely strong as far as mantras are concerned so whenever you see a chart you see Venus nicely placed and at the right place you can very very easily determine that this part the this planet Venus or Shukracharya or Shukra can help this person through mantras or mantras rather so that is one insight we can get from the Puranas the other insight is that Shukracharya is an enemy to Brahaspati or the planet Venus is not friendly to the planet Jupiter so whenever you see there's a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter you see there's a problem and I've seen that in several cases a lot of astrologers make a mention that no no both have benefits if they're sitting together there is no problem that house is good but no you will see and you will notice that whenever there is a conjunction of Venus and Jupiter it is not a very happy situation because both are enemies to each other and the Puranas the stories from the Puranas are substantiating that so like I said you know look into other scriptures as well that'll make your astrological reading a little better so today we did discuss how mercury was born why mercury is not very friendly to the planet moon why of course because he was an illegitimate illegitimate child and he was unhappy because it was moon who impregnated Tara his real mother and not his not his father which was Jupiter which which he always considered as closer than what he is to moon so mercury is closer actually mercury is not closer to to Jupiter as well because he's not the real father and he's angry with with moon because he's an illegitimate child of of moon so that's the second thing which we have learned through the Puranas so you can see that in the charts conjunction of moon and mercury not a happy situation the third thing is there is enmity between Shukracharya and Brahaspati or Venus and Jupiter so whenever you see a conjunction or an aspect not a very happy situation they're not friendly to each other and uh, and also you can see that through the through the Puranas that the planets actually can explain us a lot or the stories can ex explain us a lot as far as the planetary friendship or planetary enmity is concerned so hopefully you enjoyed this video this is kind of a video a kind of uh, a video which is not directly directly very technical as far as Vedic astrology or reading the birth charts is concerned as I've been discussing in my other videos but this one definitely definitely is interesting because it talks about the stories and how these stories can be related directly to to Vedic astrology 
So I will recommend in the meanwhile subscribe to my channel and check out my website. There is a link and I will see you with a very interesting topic. I promise you next time. Thank you.